welcome to Cards by Kendra. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm participating in an awesome collaboration with Alicia from Call Me Crafty Owl on the Inspired Saturday series on her YouTube channel. We are going to be casing cards from each other, which means we'll each choose a card that the other person has made that inspires us and make another creation from it. This is the card that Alicia made that inspired me. I think this is simply beautiful. I just love the bold colors and the black and white embossed flower. A link to her channel is in the description box below. So let's get started. For my card, I'll be using the products you see here. This is the Fantastic Florals stamp set from Pink and Main. This stamp set came in the 2019 Crafty Courtyard box, but it is still available for purchase on their website. I'll link this along with all of the other products I'm using for this card in the description box below. I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock that I've cut down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And this is for the front panel of my card. I've placed it in my Misty stamping platform. And since I'll be using embossing powder on this, I've rubbed my anti-static powder bag across the front. Now, anytime I wanna have a black embossed image, I like to use Ranger Jet Black Archival Ink and clear embossing powder since the ink stays wet just long enough for the embossing powder to stick. For some reason, I seem to have better luck using this rather than trying to use black embossing powder. For my sentiment, I wanted to use the Thinking of You stamp that came in this set, but it was too long, so I just decided to cut it in half. I'm placing the word thinking to the right of my flower since I'll be using black ink for it and the flower. I'll be stamping the other part of the sentiment in a pink color here in just a little bit. Since I'm adding clear embossing powder, I like to make sure that I get a good impression with lots of ink. So I'm going over this with several coats. And I use my microfiber cloth to help press it down so that I have good coverage. Okay, so I've turned on my heat gun and I'm letting it heat up for about 30 seconds. Now I've sped this video up, so it's going a lot faster than the process would normally go. But I'm rotating between the back and the front piece of the panel so that it won't warp. Okay, so now I'm taking a piece of black 110 pound heavyweight cardstock and I'm cutting it in half. The left half will be used for my card base and then here I'm trimming this one down to four by five and a quarter but I'm actually going to cut it down some more so that it will be the small piece in the middle of the card this will be the piece that I glue on these half inch strips down to I did cut a few extra pieces just in case I needed them and now I'm going to be gluing these pieces down onto that scrap with some Nouveau liquid deluxe adhesive I decided to use the heavyweight cardstock to glue these strips onto so that it would be a little bit more sturdy whenever I am adding the heat gun to it whenever I emboss the white part of the flower. So I'm going to set this aside and let that dry and then trim off the edges of that piece. So here I'm taking my card base and I have scored it down at five and a half inches and I am reinforcing that fold with my bone folder. And I've taken a piece of pink cardstock that I've trimmed down to an eighth of an inch smaller than the base, and I'm gluing that down. And then next I'll be working on the panel. Now I just recently posted a video of where I made 48 cards from one card kit. <clears throat> this was the Fantastic Florals 
kit that I mentioned earlier that the stamp set came in and I didn't actually use the stamp set on any of those cards. So I'll be linking this above if you want to check that out. So here I'm taking the second part of my sentiment that says of you and I am placing it directly below the word thinking and I'm using some post-it notes to cover up what I've already stamped and embossed just in case I accidentally get some ink where I don't want it and I'll be inking this up using some my favorite things Razzleberry ink and um, because I already have the first part of the sentiment embossed I need to emboss this too and so I've decided to go over this with some Versamark ink. I've uh, taken it off my platform just to set the ink and he heat it up a little bit so that it dries. And now I'm adding some Versamark to it. And then I'll be doing the same thing that I did with the other. I'll be adding some clear embossing powder to the top of this. Now I'm just figuring out placement for the stripes that I'll be temporarily taping to the front of the card so that I can stamp the flower image on top. I trimmed off the ends of those strips and I'm using scotch removable tape to hold it in place and I'm placing another sentiment on the top black strip that says and smiling. Because this sentiment and the flower are both going to be white, I'm covering up the flower part with some post-it notes so that I can ink up the flower stamp and the sentiment with some Versamark ink and not get any of it on the part of the flower that I've already stamped and embossed. I've inked up both stamps with some Versamark ink and now I'm applying some Ranger White embossing powder. Now I did use my anti-static powder bag before I applied the Versamark ink, but I still had a lot of excess flakes that I have to brush off with my paintbrush. Now for some reason the white powder did not stick to the pink piece as well as it did to the black and I'm not really sure why. But here I'm just applying my heat tool and when I'm using smaller pieces like this I like to use my tweezers so that I don't burn my fingers. So now all that's left is to assemble the card and glue everything down. So I'm, I've added some liquid glue to the back of this strip piece and I'm making sure that I place it exactly where it should so that the flower stamp is continuous. And now for the back of my panel, I'm trimming down a piece of foam sheet just slightly smaller than the panel, which is four by five and a quarter. One side of the foam is adhesive and the other isn't. So I just added a little bit of liquid glue to the other side. So now I'm just attaching this down to my card base that I've applied that pink frame to already. And then lastly, I am adding five dark pink bling stickers and I'm placing one of those in the center of the flower, which I wouldn't normally do, but this is where the embossing powder smudged a little bit on that pink strip. So I just decided to hide it with the rhinestone rather than redoing it. But I think it turned out pretty good. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I also wanted to share another project that Alicia inspired me to make. This is a dry erase board that I've lined with magnetic sheets that has adhesive on the back and this holds my metal dies. She posted a video about how she made this on her YouTube channel and I'll link it below also. I just love this idea. I have so many dies and I forget about them so now I have them on display where I can see them. So thank you Alicia. Now I just have to get my husband to hang it on my wall. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. You can also find my work on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, and on my website at cardsbykendra.com. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this, and if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.